When many people think of Peru, they think of Machu Picchu. I want to challenge those images that have been embedded into my mind. To do that, I needed to open myself up to absorb my experiences in Peru and what it had to offer me. With a population of almost 10 million people, cycling through Lima's bustling streets came with a bit of a learning curve. Not only were there dogs, but also there were schoolgirls. My most dangerous adversaries were the buses. I quickly learned that I had to be more assertive. That is, of course, only when I have a size advantage. In my mind, I'd come up with a goal of cycling from sea level, quite literally it seems, to as high an elevation as I could make it. Heading south, I encountered some expected vehicles, and some unexpected ones. Much of this coastal area has this amazing desert scape, which also brought heat and very persistent headwinds. As I can see it, there is one problem with spontaneous roadside drinking buddies and that is that I still have to ride my bicycle afterward. And their drink of choice had a bit of a kick to it. There is something about touring on a bicycle that allows people to be friendly, but maybe it is just the Peruvian nature. As they turned inland, the hills started to increase, so my effort had to as well. <sighs> Machu Picchu is definitely not the only Incan complex in Peru. Tambo, Colorado was an active community around the same time. And when I visited, I was the only person there. The further I pushed into the Andes, the steeper and more sustained were the climbs. Not thinking I'm gonna go across on that. Take my bike across, and I don't think I'd even send kittens across on it. Trying to keep cool and clean did nothing to ward off the voracious bugs or the birds. With the higher elevation, came less oxygen into my lungs, 42% less oxygen than at sea level. After six hours of the longest uphill I had ever seen, it took only 45 minutes of downhill to get back to my starting point, and I was most certainly going to enjoy the experience.